Why hello there guys, it is QWERTYAFRO here bringing you another video um, back on some train sim, I uh, haven't done uh, a train sim video in quite some time and um, today um, we're going to be doing a route on uh, the London to Peter route again but we're going to be doing it in the class 90 which is actually a very popular train as I kind of come to think of it because like my video, my most viewed train sim video is off the class 90 that I did uh, on the normal great uh, east coast mainline or whatever and that, that's like got over 4,000 views I'm like so grateful that people are watching it because that one was a quick like uh, just uh, turn on the game and I just put up a commentary together it wasn't really like anything structured I think I just kind of decided oh I'm gonna do a commentary and I basically did it but uh, we're in um, we're in this uh, kind of like um, uh, scenario. I think it was really cool. I wanted to find one because I wanted to do more videos on the London to Peterborough, but I wanted to do the Class 90 because people were requesting it, and it's just apparently such a really popular train. And I can get why because there's a lot of things that you need to do to set it up or whatever, so I kind of can see why people want it. But um, anyway, uh, Suprez, the Suprez, instead of driving the HST, uh, HST, you're driving the DVT and the Class 90. Also, uh, speed restrictions at Hitchin and Potter's Bar, so you need all consecration, uh, concentration for the career. Uh, this career scenario. Before we start the scenario, I need to do some shout outs as uh, this is my little thing that I do now. Uh, as people want them, that's glad. I'm really glad. I, like I, I was for some time wasn't getting much shout outs. People weren't asking for shout outs, and then people started asking me. I was like, okay, yeah, I can I can do this every video or whatever if people want me to. Uh, free shout outs to do uh, Mark Groomy, uh, Grinner. Sorry that I said Grimmy, I don't know why it just came into my head. But Marky, Marky Grimmer, Grinner, uh, I basically put their YouTube and their Google Plus because some of these people don't um, uh, have videos on the YouTube channel so I just put Google Plus and whatever so you can just, you know, follow them or put them in your circles as they say, as Google want to say. Uh, Bob Ranger, um, has been asking me always for a shout out, then there's your shout out Bob Ranger, check him out, and uh, also Finn Riley. I don't know if he asked for your shout out or not, but um, I'm gonna shout him out because he told me to like check out his channel and he like he did a video on 2D bus simulator, which was pretty interesting. I didn't even know that a game like that existed, but anyway, you can check it out, uh, check him out, give him some love, and uh, you know, I think it's nice, uh, nice, it's nice to have these kind of little shout outs, you know, just to show that I appreciate you guys, and you know, I, I don't mind doing this, it's not like I'm a stingy guy, and I'm just like, I don't want to shout out anyone, I don't want to know what anyone's doing, or whatever, blah, 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 but anyway, um, those are the shout outs, their links will be in the, in the description below, you can just go and say hi, or comment on any of the videos that they have, or just follow them, put them in your circles if you have a Google Plus, or whatever. Any kind of social stuff, just to show appreciation or whatever you might do. But <clears throat> let's get on with the video. I actually have my little notes here, my little notepad of the class 90, because there is a lot, there's a stuff to do. But obviously, this is, we're not doing it from a cold start, so um, obviously, um, the, the engine has been pretty much turned on. Uh, there are just a few things that we need to do. Um, first of all, let's just put the wipe on. It's a little bit annoying when there's no wiper. So, Right now, uh, we need to, uh, if I can remember, uh, da -da -da, we need to put on the master key, which I'm going to press Control Z, I think, there we go, master key set on, that thing turns on, we'll do a little beeping thing or whatever, then uh, to put the ETS on, there's a little button here, there we go, that turns the ETS on. I should get, it should change now into something else, I think. Should, I don't know. There we go, there we go, it's changed. That set up, uh, we can turn the headlights onto the day. Is Basically, you press H or you can just click it over here on this little thing. You can turn it, their headlights are on. Uh, we can also then turn on the marker lights, which is J. And uh, parking brakes off, so we don't even have to worry about that. We can turn the instrument lights of one, but just have them on dim because I think bright is a little, you know, it's for the it's for the dark, no point. Cabin light, uh, there's no real point. It's daytime. Clipboard light, not really much to look at. Now, uh, before we even start getting off, we need to go to the back. I'm doing this all professionally. Put on the tail lights. So if if I show you. There we go, the tail lights are on, so that, that stays on. Instead of me doing this all like, you know, automatically or whatever, I think it's cool that I am doing that. Anyway, back in the front cab, 
all we have to do is the ATS. I had I like I was basically I tried to record this video before, and I had a problem where the um, uh, it, it was so annoying how uh, the, uh, the the alarm warning came on. And I didn't know I was trying to find a hotkey because basically uh, the power uh, the Armstrong powerhouse pack showed a different way of doing it, and then I had to find like a normal way, and then I found out oh it's new uh, it's the new pad enter button. So you know, okay, right now all we have to do is pretty much put the thing in reverse. Q for AWS and enter for enter for resetting the um, alarm. That was the thing that really got me annoyed uh, when I was recording this for the first time. So everything is pretty much set to go. Just need to release the brake, and apparently you need to hold down the brake. You need to hold down the brake uh, for at least uh, for until it reaches 10 miles an hour. So that's what we're going to do. Slowly, we should be slowly. Getting onto a drift, hopefully. You should be getting away. Oh, silly me. Drive it. Uh, the what's this called? It's called the uh, uh, DRA. Yeah, the DRA. I forgot to top it out. So hold your brake, and there we go. And we, as we can see, we have some AI as well joining us. That's really cool. But there we go. Um, I, I'm glad I now know how to set up this class 90 uh, on the um, was it the DVT side because there's two this this carriage is the DVT uh, the one at the back is the actual class 90 so like and some people were complaining in my class 90 video that it was the wrong way around and there was there was a lot of controversy um, but I there we go annoying little alarm anyway 10 miles an hour off we can just release the brake now which is pretty good. Uh, yeah, people were arguing in my f in the in the class ninety video I did on the on the uh, uh, GEMCL uh, that <laughs> that the 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 class ninety is on the wrong way round. The DVT should be maybe the other way round or whatever. Uh, I think I was driving in the DVT. I think the DVT should be facing north uh, rather than and the class ninety should be facing um, to the city. I think that's how it should be, as I've seen when I've gone to train. So I might be wrong. But um, people were having arguments in the comments down below, and uh, someone was saying it's this way, someone was saying that way. So you know, uh, probably there is probably a white way around. Um, maybe sometimes they do it different. I don't know, but you know, we have no passenger view because you know that's how uh, Dovetail Games, yes, new name, uh, changed quite some time ago. But Dovetail Games, that's how we call them now. Uh, yeah, Dovetail Games uh, didn't decide to put a. Uh, Passenger, uh, you know, uh, passenger view for this train. I'm a little bit sad about that, but you know, there we go. We're we're running. We're, we're going great, actually. Really nice. And I found out how you open these two doors. You press M, and we're gonna try that. This is a Peterborough station. I think it'll be fun to give it a little go, give it a little fiddle to see if it works, and see if we can have a look inside. Well, I guess we're not gonna probably get to go inside or whatever, but I think it'll be. I think it'd be great. All right, let's have a little bit of a flyby action because you guys love this train. Oh, damn! What the hell? Emergency brake? What the hell? Whoa, 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 whoa! Why are we having an emergency brake? Why are we having an emergency brake? Not cool. Interesting. I don't know why we had an emergency break there. That was a little awkward. Very awkward. I don't know why. I don't know why I have an emergency break. Sometimes some trains, when you press the uh, free camera to uh, the, the the camera, sometimes maybe it's the uh, the uh, speed uh, reminder warning or whatever. It sometimes go off and you can't actually hear it when you do a flyby. And then it just goes into. Uh, that's one thing I've, I really do find annoying, uh, and I think I've had problems like that in. Um, oh, what train was it? Like in the in the class three nine five. That was one of. Yeah. Here we go. See. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. And then I think that's one of the main problems I had in the class three nine five. 
uh, is that like every time I did a flyby camera, because I wanted to see it go like nice and fast at like 200 and uh, was it 200? Yeah, 240 miles an hour or whatever. I wanted to see it just go nice and fast and whatever, but it it just didn't allow me. Uh, it, like every time I went out, every like like say past five seconds, it would do a, a speed reminder warning or whatever, and then I have to go back in the cab and it would just. So uh, basically, I'll stay in the cab from now on. I'll try and do a flyby camera if I can, if it will allow me, basically. Jesus. Oh, we can turn the wiper off because it's not raining the last time I checked. Switch on the other side and we can even turn on the um, this side wiper so we can get it clear for us. It's nice. There we go. Oh, it might even have been the day, uh, AWS, but I didn't even get an AWS warning, so to be honest, I don't even know why it just triggered off for some really weird reason. Trains have weird settings, you know. And this is this is definitely a more, much more of a sensitive train. Obviously, it's an old electric locomotive, and it's a fast free train. Obviously, it's going to be a bit more sensitive. Um, the class 86 is quite sensitive, like that. If you overcharge that when you... Um, uh, when you start to accelerate, that can be such a bitch. But I like it. I like when I drive the class uh, 86 because it's just it feels so old and then you kind of like accelerate and then you can't get past a certain part of the board. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, and I think this this is a Korea scenario and it's basically a scenario from the workshop. I think it's called going into east or something like that and I think it's actually a very advanced scenario that's why I think probably I should now stay in the cabin and not actually do fly by, uh, fly by cameras because it, uh, apparently the settings have been turned on advanced um, here so probably I'm gonna be getting a lot of warnings there's gonna be a lot of signals but this is gonna be a long scenario I think I think it said something about 80 minutes so maybe this might be a two-part video or whatever but we'll see it's gonna be definitely a long video because it is from Peterborough to London. I don't know how many stops are in between. I don't want to check. I don't want to spoil it for myself. I just want to embrace it and and let this uh, let you know just let it come to me. Right. I think I'm gonna like put no put no power anymore. I don't think I need any. Uh, we can we can start slowing down. That's uh, I think it's a. Uh, Possibility now to start slowing down. Uh, oh, as we are at 70. I think yes. Oh yes, we we definitely need to slow down. 30 miles an hour approaching, and we are turning left uh, and going into platform two. I think we should be able to slow down. 56, 50. Uh, a lot of AWS warnings. Crazy. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And there's that warning. That, that warning is going to kill me every time. And I didn't know before I started making this video about that that you press enter to do that. So I'm so glad I know it now because I was recording the video and I was like, what's this beeping? Why is it not stopping? Oh my god, oh my god, and whatever. Right. There we go. Oh, whoa, 25. Okay. Damn. We're really going out. I'm getting I'm losing points. It doesn't matter. Should have known that steep tw drop to 25. Should have been more alert for that. Right. Let's hope this platform's long enough. I I'm guessing it should be. It's Peterborough, like fast train stop here it needs to be right. right nicely does it nicely does it nicely does it and we're in come on come on come on come on, come on stop come on annoying you know annoying you are Oh, I think we just about managed it. T to open the doors. Let's see if we can open M. Use M. No. I think this front carriage didn't make it. So basically, we'll try and open these doors at the next station. I'm sorry about that. that we, we couldn't really open, try and open these doors. But we'll definitely try. Um, we'll definitely try for the... the, the 
Ah, oh, and look again. Looky here again. I go off onto the free camera this time, and it goes into full shutdown because probably it's giving me loads of alerts and stuff and whatever. But anyway, we do doors are closed. We'll try and open these two doors at the next station because we kind of slightly overran here. But to be honest, in real life, you would have probably be able to open those doors. Anyway. Yeah, there we go. There's the there's the annoying. It's called the uh, yeah the ADD alarm reset. That's what it's needing to do. But anyway, remember always to hold the brake down um, when you always hold the brake down when you uh, before 10 miles an hour. So until 10 miles an hour uh, miles per hour, um, keep the brake to hold down. As I like watched in tutorial videos and stuff like that, and what people have been telling me, so just keep the you know keep the breakdown, build up some momentum. When you pass 10 miles an hour, that's when you just take it off and uh, let it wind. So uh, gradually getting out of here. Stevenage, uh, Stevenage is our next station. 48 miles, 48 miles. That's gonna be long. But it is going to be a long video, so I'm not going to like you know cut from this station to the station. I'm going to keep it fully long, and I'm going to try and entertain you guys. 48 miles. I've not done that yet. It's going to be rather interesting. Or maybe actually, you know, I'll do about 20 miles, and then I'll kind of stop it, and then you know, because yeah, come on, 48 miles is quite a lot of time. Where I'm going to be trying to entertain you guys. This isn't a gameplay video. This is a commentary. Uh, if it was a gameplay video, I would gladly just, you know, use um, use the, um, um, the, the, the this 48 miles for just talking to, uh, no, just, just showing you the gameplay. But it's a commentary, so, you know, I want to talk, but I probably won't be able to talk for 48 miles. That's quite a lot of talking. And I'm sure any of you guys wouldn't be able to talk for 48 miles. Oh my god, the more I say it to myself, okay, I think that's a nicer, nicer view, so we can see the dials. But yeah, 48 miles is quite uh, a trick. I, I, as I said, I'll try and do as much as I can. Like, obviously, if it gets to a point where I think, you know, I'm gonna see you at the next station, basically, then, you know, I, I'll gladly just, you know, cut to the, cut the scene, and there's the ADD again. That's gonna be so annoying. We're not gonna we're not gonna try and miss it this time, and we're gonna basically get it every time. We're not gonna go into an emergency stall again, but we got into emergency stall while we were stationary, so you know, such a safety system. But I think we're good. This is gonna be a very nice, long, smooth ride. It's gonna be a very long, smooth. Oh, and there we go. The rain's back on, so wipers on. Oh, and there's the ADD again. <laughs> oh, how, how many times does it have to flipping ring? You just ring once and that be it. Anyway, gradually increase. I've not seen this part of the uh, route yet in daytime. I did a video where I did from Biggles Wade to um, Peterborough. And I was basically driving in the dark, so I pretty much couldn't see the scenery or whatever. So, you know... Um, this is my first actual time driving from Peterborough to, I think, well, I haven't been past, uh, I haven't been past Wading Garden City, so yeah, this is pretty much my first time, and that is going to be so annoying, but you know, it's it's the realism, it's there, I, I, I reach out with my fingers to press that, uh, that enter button, and dedication right there. I would actually. I'm, I'm interested. What would it actually be if I had it on rail driver? Do I would still need to press enter on the keyboard, or does a rail driver have a dedicated? I don't even know. Probably doesn't. It only has the. It only has the AWS. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, because some things uh, you can't do everything on the. Well, maybe there might be a button that you can assign it to on uh, on the uh, bottom part of the rail driver. That's what I'm pretty much thinking you'd be doing. So, yeah. But, um, I think also for these kind of longer maybe videos and stuff where there's like, say, not a station in 45 miles, I've covered, what, three miles so far, and, uh, you know, it's going well. 
Uh, but there, there is, there is, I could do some stuff. I can suggest, like, people, uh, if they want me to talk about any topics, maybe during these long uh, cruises to stage, between stations or whatever. I think it would be fun or whatever. But um, there's the ADD again. But um, one thing I also wanted to talk about is I'm getting a kind of redesign of my channel. I'm going to get some new graphics soon. And uh, I wonder if anyone of you guys have noticed, but... Uh, on the OMC2 videos, basically the thumbnails have this new kind of border around them, and that's basically the kind of start of uh, uh, these new graphics that are coming out for my channel. As I thought to myself, you know, this channel kind of does need a little bit of spicing up. I basically got this kind of uh, uh, afro icon and, and stuff uh, for the channel that I use currently. I got it, like, when... I was still making tech, so I didn't primarily make that uh, this icon that I currently use. I didn't primarily make it for um, for gaming and stuff. So that's why uh, people might question why does it say Buzz in your afro or whatever? Because my uh, channel my channel is called Hamster Buzz. Like the URL is still Hamster Buzz. It's just I changed the name to Quite the Afro because I wanted to change it, but. Um, my channel is called Times the Buzz, and that's what I—that's uh, what my channel was before when I was doing tech and stuff. So when I got these uh, uh, first logos done for me quite some time ago, before I did, before I started doing gaming, uh, I only I asked, "Oh, could you make something where it kind of says Buzz Gaming?" Because uh, my name is called Times the Buzz, and I thought, "Okay, oh, yeah, I'm gaming and tech buzz or whatever, just s something like that." I, I I told the guy to you know make it like that or whatever, blah blah blah. And yeah, it, it's 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 lasted me quite some time. This logo and people like it, um, and I do like it. It's a great logo, but I kind of thought to myself recently, you know what? I think I could kind of try something new and kind of brand my channel. Like say, have something for everything. Like even get an intro. That's something also part of the package I'm going to be getting is I'm going to be getting an intro, an outro. And also, I'm going to be getting a promo video as well, so I can have a chan a proper channel trailer, which would be pretty cool. So stuff like that, and even some maybe some animations for like you know, like favorite and subscribe, uh, or an overlay or whatever on the video. Uh, so right, say right now, like I could put like an overlay on the video, like saying oh like and comment. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to, whatever, something like that. Um, Add again. You have to sometimes maybe press it twice, which is annoying, but you know. These are quite stiff little buttons in this cab. Everything's quite old. This is quite an old train. It's not it's not new. It's not even old, but you know, it's it's in between. But uh yeah, so I'm kind of getting this kind of new redesign for my channel and uh, I hope you guys like it. I haven't seen much of what how it looks like because of the kind of the the graphic people that are doing it for me they're still working on it and I hopefully it'll be done soon like the promo video is going to take the longest so that's like the last thing you guys will see but even if you if you're subscribed to me you probably won't see it um, because it will be as my channel trailer but you I'll probably put it up as live uh, I was gonna I think you're putting it up as unlisted or private so it, it doesn't pop up in your subscription boxes but I might just put it as like a video that everyone can watch so you guys can tell me what do you think of it? Do you think it'd be, uh, do you think it'd be nice to like draw in new people to the channel or whatever? So you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, what else do I have to talk about? Yeah, that's the kind of basic here. They kind of redesign of the channel, getting a new logo, new banner. Uh, as I said, intro and outro. So it's all good. As I, as I said, I already started using the new borders on like OMC2 videos. So that's all pretty good. Um, I can talk about like um, <sighs> AWD ADD is gonna be annoying me and cutting me through like my stories and whatever. But uh, uh, I can talk to you guys about like stuff that's happening to me current currently right now in my life. I'm um, like, well, basically right now I'm attending college, as like some of you know. I kind of do talk about um, some of my kind of educational stuff and whatever in my previous videos, but. I think this would be a nice long kind of. I'll try and, and stretch this 38 miles unless I try and like you know cut to uh, the Stevenage. But I'll try and make it long and soothing. And you know you're enjoying the ride, and I'm just you know here sitting back in my chair, and I'm telling you guys a story of my life. Well, not a story of my life. I'm just telling you my current like my current affairs in life. But um, 
I, I attend college, which is not the college as it is. Well, I don't know if it's similar to the American term college, but here it's kind of you do primary, so you, you know, you do nursery, reception, uh, then you do uh, primary school uh, from ages like 5 to 11, then secondary school 11 to 16, and then from 16 to 18 you do college. Uh, which I, I think that's high school for America. I, I, I really don't get the American system, so sorry if anyone's kind of like confused around. Oh, do I need to turn off my Viper? Is it ring? No, it's not ring. Cool, I can turn off. But I'm basically in college right now. I'm studying. You pick A levels, that's what they're called here. They used to be called O levels or whatever. I think they're bring, trying to bring back O levels or something. I, I don't know. But um, I do currently, I do maths, I do uh, geography, I do. Um, and, and I do architecture as A-levels. I'm in the second year of my A-levels, uh, in the first year they're called AS-levels. But also, with those three A-levels, I have picked up an AS-level, which some people can do, and it is a lot more work, because you're picking up an extra AS, normally you would drop one. But I picked up geology as an, as an AS. And geology is pretty, it's pretty rare, because uh, not many colleges and sixth forms in the UK do geology as an actual a level because it's pretty rare and you don't really need it to do geology at university and that's the kind of thing I want to do. I want to go uh, because I've, I've already applied to do geology at different universities like in, in the UK you uh, sign up to this thing called UCAS and you need UCAS points or whatever to get into university or etc and You, you you find the line or whatever personal statement all that kind of uh, shit you need to do for it and you have to pick five universities five universities you want to apply to and i picked like a few like i picked ucl uh, university city of london if anyone doesn't know the abbreviations uh, this university called royal holloway which rejected me that's the only uh, university so far that's rejected me uh, Southampton, Southampton and UCL I'm waiting still for offers and then the other two I picked was uh, Leicester and Plymouth which have both given me offers and yeah I want to do geology and the reason why I want to do geology is because I've, I've always been kind of interested in that kind of like because I've always done geography and I really found geography really interesting and I was going to pick some kind of geography degree first but I kind of had a change of hearts when I kind of did the first year of the geography AS and I kind of thought to myself that I actually really don't like the human stuff it's shit and it's boring and some people like it I get why you like it I personally don't like it I think it's pretty boring I don't it's basically the human side uh, the human side of geography is kind of economics I really don't like economics I don't like the whole kind of thing about economies and and um, a whole kind of thing with like world poverty and uh, it's just it's such a it's interesting but it's a very because right now I have to because well, I'm still doing geography as an A-level I still have to do a human subject which I'm doing uh, the human subject I am doing is uh, called conflict where I look at different topics of like a conflict around in different countries around the world and but, like uh, the thing about this human subject is it's very emotional because it, like I was learning the other day about in the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, that over 50% of the population gets raped, and it's just kind of hard stuff when you learn about it. So it's just so I, I find the human side kind of boring, but also I kind of find it a little bit just unnerving because when you learn about uh, different stuff that happens around the planet, you kind of wake up and you realize that it's not all pretty and whatever you see around because there's other stuff out there around the world that happens and is re like real shit and it kind of gets you thinking oh well I'm lucky to be in this position or whatever and it, it's you know it just kind of makes you think about like the world more and even though I like thinking like that but I wouldn't really want to see myself doing that I'm not really interested in that I think I would be uh, overthinking things if I did that and I just wouldn't really enjoy it for myself I kind of enjoy it for society but I wouldn't enjoy it for myself that's why I kind of picked geology instead of picking like a geography degree because in a geography, de geography degree you do kind of like physical stuff and you do human stuff which is all good you know it's, it's good but like, you get a bit of both or whatever but with geology you just do the physical stuff and and to be honest it's not just pure physical stuff 
you have to, we, we, being a geologist, you need to take in the human factors. It's not like you just look at rocks all day or you look at a volcano or something like that. You need to take into account of human risks and stuff like that. Because geologists say if you're predicting a volcanic eruption or something like that, you know, a, a geologist has to say, okay, look, the people living here, whatever, maybe we should think of doing a plan and they will talk to your authorities. That's how a geologist works. And that's what I kind of really interested myself into. And that's what I really want. And also the kind of main aspect is obviously the kind of physical kind of geography, the kind of physical geology and stuff. I really like learning about the actual living world, like how the, the planet forms and, and volcanoes and like, it's just crazy to think that only like say something like 100 kilometers below our feet 60, 60 to 100 kilometers below our feet is molten rock liquid rock like that's something you might not stop and think about during the day but i do and that's what i think about in my head it's just interesting to think that right now below your feet somewhere down there is liquid rock and that liquid rock you know shapes our earth it it it's the reason you're here right now because if none of you, if some of you don't know, uh, the kind of cycle of life, how it began, uh, was the triggering of um, gases and chemicals from uh, geothermal activity below the sea before there was no vegetation and stuff on the surface of the planet. So volcanoes and like geothermal activity and volcanic activity owe um, a lot to us because they kind of started the sprouting of life. So, you know, it's just all this kind of interesting stuff, but I don't really, I don't want to uh, come over boring. So, you know, just tell me in the comments if you like this sort of stuff, but I, I kind of like, do you, would you, would you allow me to kind of talk like this? Because I kind of, I kind of am scared, as scared of doing this, if I, if I talk like this and then not talk, uh, talk about the com, uh, I do talk about the, uh, the video that I'm, uh, the video game I'm playing. I do talk about, like, we passed one station, but there's not really much to say. But I, I, have, I'm t I will talk about the, the the video when it gets relevant. But um, I hope you guys appreciate that. I, I I want to talk to you about these kind of sort of things, and I hope you guys would want me to do more of that. I can do commentaries which are just like based on a topic or whatever. If you want me to do that, suggest a topic, and I don't mind. I can talk for quite some time about a topic or whatever. I don't mind. Just suggest it in the comments below, and I, I'll do a commentary. I like pick a line or whatever, a nice long line again, and I'll just talk, and we can have a discussion or whatever, I, I don't mind, I, and I, I wouldn't mind hearing your opinions, what do you think, do you have, because I think everyone does geography uh, in school, and then like if you want to take it on third or whatever, so like it would be interesting to hear what people think about geography, like do you like it, um, what do you think of it, that would be pretty interesting to know, 